The girl was putting on lipstick. Suddenly a force pulled her into the car. When the girl woke up again, it's 15 years later. The girl has no idea, looking at the bottle on her arm. She can't remember what happened. Just then, an old woman came in. She told the woman not to move and said she was the doctor here. But the woman doesn't seem to believe her. This is a game. I'm sorry, I don't understand. The woman looked very weak. She couldn't remember anything except the word game. Who am I? Your name is Samantha Andretti. From the doctor, we know that Samantha's memory has been affected by the drugs she's been taking for the past 15 years. While her mother-in-law is investigating the case, the doctor is helping her to recover her memory. After hearing this, Samantha was still not convinced. It was only when the doctor took out a photo of the girl from 10 years ago that Samantha changed her mind. Looking at her younger self in the photo, Samantha finally believed the doctor's words. The doctor asked her to try to remember what happened over the years. Samantha's expression was frowning, Looking at the red ball in the doctor's hand, recalling a trace of her memory, Samantha was lying on a cold, dark floor with a four-sided box in front of her eyes. Then she tried to walk out, but it seemed to be a maze. No matter how hard she tried, she couldn't get out. So Samantha shook the box in her hand. The light in the room next to her suddenly came on. Samantha stepped forward and carefully pushed the door open. What appeared in front of her was a clean tote bag. And when she opened it, inside was a fresh loaf of bread. The hungry Samantha devoured the bread. After eating the bread, Samantha scrutinized the box in her hand. And then after a few more shakes, a clean bed appeared in front of her eyes. It turns out that the game on the box will reward Samantha with something for every level he passes. All Samantha wanted now was water. But the game on the box was getting harder and harder. Suddenly a dirty toilet appeared in front of him. Samantha tried to control herself, but she drank it anyway. She's not happy about it, but after dropping it, she regretted it. So he kept apologizing and begging for forgiveness, and picked up the thrown box. The woman woke up with a start. She was in a dimly lit maze. She tries to find a way out. She finds a strange iron door. The code to open it was taped to the door. Samantha didn't think twice before entering the code. When she pushed the door open, a woman with her hands behind her back appeared. She was crying. He promised me he sent me home after. <laughs> Samantha hurriedly closed the door and locked it behind her. She never dared to open the door again. I don't know how long it took. The room smelled of decay. The woman was already dead. And so Samantha lived on in a maze of confusion. One day, she noticed something moving under the sheets. Samantha approached slowly and courageously lifted the sheet. It was a black cat. With the cat by her side, she felt much better. This is all Samantha remembers. The doctor told her it wasn't a cat and asked Samantha to look at her stomach. She unbent it and there was a C-section scar on her stomach. What she saw wasn't a cat. It was her baby. Where is the baby now? Is this doctor really a doctor? Let's go back to 15 years ago. Samantha was taken away by a mysterious car and has been vaporized ever since. FBL searched for her with great difficulty, but there was no trace of her. Samantha's parents found a private detective, but the detective took the money and still couldn't find the girl after all these years. But the detective had a clue that the kidnapper was a man wearing a rabbit mask. But the detective had a terminal heart attack, so he wanted to walk away. But then he saw Samantha's missing person posters on TV. If he left like that, he would die in peace. He decided to find the girl before he died. The detective went to the missing person section of the police station. The walls were densely packed with photos of children who had disappeared and were never found. The detective explained his purpose. With the help of the superintendent, they found a suspicious boy from decades ago. The boy's name was Dasan and he loved to slaughter rabbits since he was a child. The detectives found Dawson's foster mom at the address, but the foster mom said something very meaningful. Then the mother took the detective to the basement and took out a comic book from a box. The comic book was ordinary, nothing suspicious. At this time, the detective did not realize that the foster mother from behind has raised the hand of the cane. When the detective woke up again, there was no one around him. All he heard was the sound of a heated argument upstairs, and then a drop of blood dripped onto his face. The foster mom was dead. The detective hid in the stairway, afraid to make a move. Then a man came down. The detective hurriedly pulled the rope he had prepared in advance, and then took the opportunity to run upstairs. In the panic, he just took the car keys by hand, but forgot his cell phone on the table. When the detective returned home, his wife had already collapsed in a pool of blood. It turned out that the murderer was one step ahead of the detective based on his cell phone information. At that moment, the detective heard a noise behind the curtains. He opened the curtains, and there was the man in the rabbit mask. He was lying in the bathtub. Diane, the detective asked him to take off the mask. But the man says he's not the murderer, that the real masked man is his childhood brother. He had escaped during the fight. The detective believed him and rushed to his brother's house. But as soon as he entered the room, 
the detective had a heart attack, and then the so-called brother appeared in front of him from the man's mouth. He learns that this is just a diversionary tactic. The man lying in the bathtub was the murderer, but the detective had no strength to investigate any further. Before he died, he recorded all the evidence on a tape, but the masked man got up from the hospital bed and sneaked into Samantha's room. But when he lifted the covers, he realized that there was a dunny on the bed. Just when he was surprised, FBL surrounded him, and Samantha, who had been kidnapped for 15 years, was finally rescued up to this point in the story. I don't know if you have a lot of questions, who is the Samantha at the beginning? Who is the doctor? Let's go back to the Samantha at the beginning. The doctor brings him a pizza. When he sees the pizza, Samantha immediately remembers the time when he was in prison. Every once in a while, the kidnappers would bring him a pizza. Suddenly the phone rings beside him. Samantha picks it up shakily. Hello? The girl was sucked into the car by a force. She woke up again, 15 years later. Suddenly the phone rings beside her. Samantha picks up the phone trembling. Transfer the order. Your pizza. Samantha was terrified because she vaguely remembers that when she was imprisoned, the kidnappers would bring over a pizza every once in a while. She hurriedly pressed the button in her hand that called for a nurse, but no nurse came at all. So she dragged her weak body out of the hospital room. The corridors were dark and there was no one there. This isn't a hospital at all. She slowly raised the bouncy ball in her hand and threw it with all her might. Sure enough, she was still trapped in the maze. As she continues to walk forward, she realizes that the doctor who is treating her is recording the conversation they just had. Looking at the equipment in the room, Samantha finally realized that this doctor was the kidnapper who held her captive, picking up the newspaper on the table. There was already a message on it. Samantha was found by the police a year ago. Looking at her haggard self in the mirror, the woman touched the black mole on her face. The mole was easily wiped off, so she's not Samantha. And what is her identity? With all these doubts, the woman quietly returned to the hospital bed again, pretending she knew nothing about it. Soon after, the fake doctor came in. He pretended to say that the woman's murderer had been brought to justice and began to inject her with drugs. The woman knew that this memory-destroying game had been repeated on her many times. Thinking of this, the woman ticked the fake doctor. Taking advantage of the kidnapper's fainting effort, the woman rushed out of the hospital room, then took away the map of the labyrinth and limped to find the exit. While the kidnapper's stump appear in front of her at all times, the woman knows that everything she sees is a lie. Eventually she breaks out of her bonds and finds the exit to the floor. She finally climbs out and rushes to cover the manhole, locking the kidnapper down forever. After 367 days of being trapped, she finally walks out. In fact, the woman's real identity is a cop. She took over the case of Samantha's disappearance 15 years ago. And who is the fake doctor? Actually a passerby. The fake doctor saw the news of Samantha's disappearance on TV a year ago. He found Samantha's story interesting. So on a one, he imprisoned the police woman. That's the end of the story. I don't know if you got it. This is the movie El Womo del Labyrintho, directed by Donato Carisi. The movie is a labyrinth within a labyrinth and it's puzzling to know which parts were designed and which ones actually happened. It is very doubtful that the author of the cartoon was Hoffman, as Hoffman was keen on designing mazes and used such means to spread at least to other generations of dark bunnies. In the movie, the earliest holder of the comics was indeed Hoffman, but this is clearly a medieval occult technique. Hoffman may also have been a protege 